Welcome back everyone, my name is Avin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about top 10 programming languages for 2019. Now if you are here just for the list, this is your list and we got ranking as well. So we have 10 languages with their ranking. That's done, you can pause the video, hit that like button and you can close the window. But hold on, why you want to know the ranking here? The answer is, as a developer, when we use a language, when you are working on a language, you want to know the importance of that language compared to other languages. Or maybe if you are a new developer or if you want to learn programming for the first time, you also want to know what language to learn first. Should you learn Java? Should you learn Python? And that's where you want to know the top 10 languages. But what if I say every language listed here is important? It's very difficult to rank them. Yes, we have created this ranking with the help of the number of repositories on GitHub, with the help of uh, Stack Overflow questions in terms of the searches. In fact, as for the stats on Amazon, the most searched programming book is of Python. So that's why it, the ranking of Python goes up. So based on all those factors, we have created this ranking. But that doesn't mean that one language is better than the other language. Example, let's say if we talk about the new language like Dart, it may be better than Java, it may be better than Python. It's just that people are not using it as much as other languages. But every language is important and every language provides a lot of features. So how do you choose your language and then how can you give this ranking? Now first of all, when you talk about a developer, we have different domains, right? You can be an Android developer, you can be an iOS developer, you can be an embedded developer like IoT. Uh, you can get into machine learning, you can be an enterprise developer. So based on what market you're working on, you, can, you will choose a particular language there. So example, let's say if you want to be into mobile. So in mobile, we have two options. You can go for Android or you can go for iOS. For Android, the language which we use is Java. So Java is what you say, the dominant language. But on the other hand, we also have Kotlin. So Java was the official language before, and now we have two languages. We can use Java or we can use Kotlin. The only problem with Java is it is very verbose, right? You have to mention everything. That's not the case with Kotlin. It is short and simple, but then, if you know Java, you can learn Kotlin very easily. And what if I say, when you write a Kotlin code, when you run that, or when you compile that, it gets converted into Bytecode itself, which runs on JVM. So yes, they are almost same now. So we have Java, we have Kotlin. Now we have to wait for the new future updates of Java from Java 8. Java is coming up with a lot of updates. So we got Java 9 with modularity, we got Java 10 features. And now in Java 11, we got so many amazing features. Java will be booming again. And the, we have Kotlin as well, which is getting new features every time. And then for iOS, we have a language which is Swift. Now Swift is the official language for iOS from Apple. And if you want to be iOS developer, Swift is the best option. So, but then what if you want to use one language for both the purpose and that's where we have JavaScript. Now JavaScript is evolving like anything, you know. Initially JavaScript was only for front-end and now JavaScript can be used everywhere. Maybe it can be mobile, like you can build an app on both the platform. You can use JavaScript for web development. Okay, when I say web development, not just front-end, you can use it for back-end as well. We can also create databases, which is MongoDB, right, which is JSON formats. So you can use JavaScript for the entire stack, and that's why we normally refer as mean stack. So in mean stack, you can build the entire application using JavaScript. In fact, we have talked about that in one of the video. So JavaScript is booming. So let's talk about, again, mobile development. So mobile development, we can do with the help of Java and then uh, Swift. On the other hand, we can also do that with the help of JavaScript. Now Google came up with their own technology or own framework for Android which is Flutter. I mean not just for Android but for iOS as well. So use one technology you can build on both the platforms and that's where Flutter comes into picture. And the language which we use in Flutter is Dart. And that's where it will be booming in future as well. Now it depends upon how fast people adopt Flutter that will decide the future of Dart but for sure it has potential. So it's not that if you have learned Dart, there's no future. Of course there is, right? So we have these languages and though their domains. Now, if you talk about Java, which is for Android, which we use, we can also use Java for one of the big market, which is enterprise. Most of the big companies, they are building big projects, the complex projects. They also want their project to be scalable and that's where they prefer Java. Maybe there are other languages which are also scalable now, but then the old projects, the legacy is coming from Java. So of course they will be choosing Java in future as well. And thanks to the new features which is coming up with Java, so they will be using Java there as well, okay? So Java is not going anywhere. 
Now let's say if you want to get into embedded systems, let's say if you want to build your own OS, let's say you want to build your own browser. Now this is a place where you need a language which is very fast because if you want to build a game, of course it should be fast. If you want to build OS, it should be fast. You need a language which works closely to the hardware. And that's where we have a very amazing language which we all know C++. Now C++ is something we can use now as well. It's not that C++ is dying, it can be used in all these domains. Now let's say you are a big Microsoft fan. You want to work on Microsoft technologies. Maybe you're a big fan of Microsoft own cloud service, which is Azure, or you are fascinated about their own language. And that's where C Sharp comes into picture. Now C Sharp is one of the language we're using which you can build Microsoft applications. Now C Sharp is very famous, not just in Microsoft world, but also for mobile development. Oh, now that's scary because we don't use Windows Phone. So how can we use C Sharp for mobile development? Now, if you have heard about Xamarin, now using Xamarin, you can make an application for both the platforms, for Android and iOS both. And in Xamarin, we use C Sharp. So that's about mobile development and web services. What about games? Now, if you have heard about Unity, so in Unity, which is built on C++, but we use C Sharp to write a code in that. So yes, you can also build games in C Sharp. What if you want to build web apps, that too in an easy way and very fast? And that's where we have the world best web development tool, which is WordPress. And WordPress uses PHP. Now PHP is not going anywhere, okay? So it was there, it is working now, and people will be using that in future as well. Most of the startups and you know, product-based companies, they are still working on PHP. Some people are saying PHP will be going away, but then at least for five to six years, not going anywhere. In fact, you know, the language which we are using nowadays, will be there for next five to six years for sure. Again, we cannot predict the future. Maybe in next five to six years, we'll be having some more powerful languages. But hold on, even these languages will be updating themselves. They will not simply go away just by waiting for the new language. And now let's talk about the top ranking language. So the world is changing, right? From a normal software development, we are moving towards some new technologies. And one of them is data science, machine learning. I'm talking about AI here. Now in this area, the most used language is Python. Now if you search for any machine learning course online, 90% chance is that they will be using Python there. Why Python? Because it is very easy to work on. In fact, if you can just go to description area, you will find a link for Python as well. Just watch the videos. You will find it's one of the easiest language ever. In fact, that was the main idea, right? So before building Python, the idea was to build a language which will be easier for everyone to learn. So when I say machine learning, is it only Python we can use there? Uh, not exactly, we can also use Java there, we can also use JavaScript. So in machine learning as well, let's say if you talk about TensorFlow, we have tensorflow.js, using JavaScript you can do that, or we can also use Python for TensorFlow. We also have some Java library using which you can do machine learning, but they are not that famous. So as of now, Python is booming in machine learning. But is it Python can be used only for machine learning? Not exactly, you can still use Python for web development. If you heard about Django framework, you can also use Python for GUI development using some GUI frameworks. So you can use Python everywhere. It is basically a general purpose language, just like Java or C Sharp. So that's about the least. Oh, we missed one thing, which is Golang. Now, if you work with any Google Cloud services, they might be using Golang there. In fact, Dropbox, Dropbox is built on Golang, which or Golang, we can say that. So the important point is every language here is important. Yes, the list is based on the repositories. The list is based on the craze you have in the market, but every language is great and they have huge potential. So if you are working on any of these languages, don't worry you're still safe, okay? There's, your language is not going anywhere. The only thing you can do is, the language which you're working on, keep updating yourself. There are certain frameworks in that language, learn them as well, it is powerful. But there's no harm in checking out some other language. Let's say if you're working on PHP, there's no harm in checking for Python. If you're working on Python, there's nothing wrong if you can learn Java, that's at the same point. But I feel, as I mentioned in the previous videos as well, stick to one technology at least for one or two years. That's very important. So that's about my ranking. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me in the comment section. In fact, let me know what is your ranking, what you feel about these languages. And if I missed any of the language here, you can mention that in comment section as well. Also mention why that language is important if you're saying that. So that's all in this video. Hit that like button and do subscribe for, for the videos. Bye-bye.